I don't know if you knew it, but because you kept saying Bethlehem in two of the hymns, that's actually very relevant to what we're doing today. Okay. So the sermon today is chosen by God. Now, it was predicted uh, in Isaiah that this would happen. Basically, the tree would have to be chopped down. And you would start again with a new root. This is how Isaiah described it. Okay, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Okay, And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now, Yay. yeah, it worked. See, put faith in it, it works. Okay, so what was the point of this new root that was going to come? Now, we know Christmas is coming, Jesus is going to be born. This is what was going to happen. Okay. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. And so it shall uh, be to the gen... So sh where is it here? I made it too wide. Okay. It shall stand for an ensign for the people, and to it the Gentiles shall seek, and his rest shall be glorious. When Jesus dies, he goes to rest, and resurrected again. It will be glorious. This is predicted in Isaiah. Okay. A sign to the people. Okay. Now we see the cross as a sign. We see the cross everywhere. We feel happy. Okay. It's not always a good thing because bad people use it as well. But for us, it's a sign. Now. Matthew rebukes people for this reason. Okay. Now. John, John has come and the scribes and Pharisees have come to him and he has a go at them. He attacks them. He says to them, do not think to say within yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that God is able to make of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid to the root of the trees. All the way to the bottom. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. If I don't see any good in you, it's not Mario speaking. This was John speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. He's saying to them, I've seen nothing good in you. What good fruit is there? Bring me fruits of repentance. Show me that you're changing. The whole rotten tree is going to be chopped down. Now, the axe, God is getting rid of the old system, the old hierarchy, the old structure, because it needed to be brought down. And many times people need to do that to start again. Now, if a tree is rotten, it does happen. Trees do go rotten. They start at the top. It's rotten at the top. The leaders are rotten. The top people, the, the, the people in charge are rotten. They make the middle rotten because the people are following them. That goes all the way down to the bottom, the lowest believers. The root is still good. You see, the root is twice the size of a tree. That's the rules. So what do you have to do if you want to start again? I'm going to get rid of the whole structure, the whole thing, everything. Okay? And Jesus will come. When Jesus comes, things are going to be different. He's going to teach people righteousness. He's not going to judge with his eyes. He's going to judge by the righteous things that these people do. You can't con him. You can't trick him because he knows our thoughts. And people these days, when they do that, they don't seem to realize that if God could do that to them, he will also do it to us. 
People think they're safe. There is a there's a very false teaching out there that you're bulletproof and once you've said a few prayers and a few words, you're going to heaven. Okay? When the Bible says you are saved, you are saved. Does it mean you can't be hacked down again? Let's see what the rest of the Bible says. Okay? So this is Saul. Okay? He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And I answered, who art thou? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Now, where was Jesus born? No. Close? Bethlehem. We said it in two songs. <laughs> okay? Born in Bethlehem. Why is he not called Jesus of Bethlehem? I'll explain why. It's, I think it's easier if I just show you, okay? Come on, work, just for one week. <laughs> I always found it puzzling why he's identified as Jesus of Nazareth, and, and the film called him Jesus of Nazareth, things like that. Nazareth designed from the Hebrew word for branch, remember? A new root will start. Branch or root. Same word in Hebrew. Nasser. Nasareth. Okay? It alludes to prophetic messianic words in the book of Isaiah 11.1, which we did, a new root will come. Okay? From Jesus' root, a branch, Netzah, will bear fruit. Okay? Now, and there's a, a branch or shoot. Sometimes when a tree is chopped down, a shoot will grow from the stump. Sometimes. Allowing a new tree to spring up where the old one has died. Where the old one has died. Now we know why he was called that. Jesus of Nazareth, a branch, a root. It's not an accident. These things come in that way. It's not a play on words. It's the fulfilling of prophecy. Because sometimes people say, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that he'll be born in Nazareth. That's right, it doesn't. It tells you exactly where he'll be born. Bethlehem, Ephrata, you remember the, the, the prophecy? That's what it is. So, what do we do? We see that prophecy is 100% fulfilled, even where Jesus grew up. If you grow up in Nazareth, that's what happened. Now, if you read the Bible, it says that he had to flee to Egypt after he was born to escape all of Herod's men. And then the angels kill all the men that were chasing him, and he comes back. That's how it is. So, this tells us what happens with Gentiles and Jews. This is very confusing for some people. Some people, because uh, I've heard this a lot, we should pray for Israel. Yes. <laughs> the same as you pray for everyone else, though. Okay? It's not a specialist, racist. God isn't like that. Two of the tribes of Israel are actually half Egyptian through Joseph. Other people join. It's not a case of uh, blood. Or, or racism, or anything like that. It was this, okay? The root was always God. To grow out of it was this. If some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them and with them, you partake of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. You are the people of God. You were grafted in. You grow in the same tree. That was the point of Jesus, to bring everyone in. Okay? Thou will that say, the branches were broken off that I may be grafted in. Did Israel fall so that the Gentiles could become God's people? Yes and no. It was part of a master plan. Let me show you. Well, because of their unbelief, they were broken off. So what cuts you off from God? Your unbelief. Okay? And unbelief can be anything. It could be the crimes you commit, the things you do. Uh, you distance yourself from God. Thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Ha ha, you lot were thrown out. Where the new root, where the new tree. No. Don't be high-minded. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. 
It's a warning. Get right with God. Or else. Now, I would love to say softy soft words every week. Except that I can't. Because that's not my job. My job is to get people to take heed. Okay? You can be broken off. People can be broken off. Now, it's a scary thing. I thought I was saved. You are saved. But remember the way you live your life. <laughs> Don't start resting with this super injection that they do into churches where, you know, you're saved now. Nothing you do can exclude you from heaven. Can you be broken off? The answer is yes. Okay? No one can lead you out, but you can lead yourself out. Now, behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but uh, on them which fell, severity. So what we've got is goodness and severity for God. Okay? Severity on them which fell. Israel. God came down hard on them. Chopped down the tree and started again. On them which fell. But towards thee, you Gentiles, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise I shall also be cut off. A warning. Don't get too comfy. <laughs> okay? Let's uh, remember that we're in a fight and we should fight. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, if they get rid of their unbelief towards Jesus, okay, shall be grafted back in. For God is able to graft them in again. We know this because there's nothing that God can't do. Amen? Amen. So let's not look down on them. Now let me tell you some fantastic, amazing news. Half of the Hebrews are now Christian. Half. So the Jewish people are converting to Christianity by the droves. Loads and loads and loads and loads. Those that do, grafted in, no problem. But what was the master plan? You're going to see in this verse. If thou, which were, uh, if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, okay, you were wild before, and were grafted contrary to nature, you wasn't going to be saved, okay? A lot of the prophets, they, they came to, uh, now it does say that it will go to the Gentiles. Solomon said it and Isaiah said it in the Old Testament. But there was a few others as well that said it. But generally, in generally, the prophets went to the Jews, to the Hebrews, okay? We were wild at the time, <laughs> okay? How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I... I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit. Boy, this stands for today. <laughs> that blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Israel was blinded and turned against Jesus for a reason. It was part of the plan. It always was. It was part of the plan so that the Gentiles come in. Now what happens? The Jews save us and we save them. You become one. The prediction. All right, we're halfway there on this prediction now. Only. Okay. So all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jesus will get rid of all the things they're doing wrong. For this is my covenant to them, a new deal with the people of Israel, that when, when I take away their sins, okay, I'm going to die on the cross for their sins, I'm going to wipe away their sins, and then they could be saved. So, this is a very interesting verse. Now, I've read this many times, but last night it really hit me. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Very strange words. Do you have enemies in your life? 
Are they there for your sake? As touching the election they beloved for the Father's sake, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That doesn't mean, as some people have read it, that you don't have to repent. I was sitting there, I was, some guy was telling me in a debate, I was debating with five people online from all these other countries. Okay, he's going to, it means you don't have to repent. No, it means God's not going to call, uh, repent from the promises and gifts. It says it. But when God offers you a gift, he's not going to take it back. That is not what God does. Okay. But we go back to this. They are enemies for your sakes. There's a reason they're your enemies. There's a reason. Yeah, thank you, Ray, for that. There's a reason sometimes for bad people in your life. There's a reason you have to fight. In the Old Testament, he says, I am leaving the remnant of those people to teach you war. Sometimes you need to learn how to fight or there's certain problems that you need to overcome. Is it patience? In my case, yes. Is it speaking? Learning to speak without losing your temper in a calm Christian way. Guilty. Therefore, God will leave those enemies in my life till I learn my lesson. For your sake. Remember what he says to Adam. Cursed is the ground for your sake. You doing an honest day's work, you will understand what you lost <laughs> and what you had. Okay? Cursed is the ground for your sake. Now, uh, okay. For as you in times past have not believed God, Gentiles, people, pagans, things like that, okay? You didn't believe in times past yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Because Israel messed up, <laughs> we're okay. We had this opportunity, okay? Even so, these also now believe that through your mercy, you, Gentiles, they are also may obtain mercy. They need you and you need them. Don't fight each other. For God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. We see the master plan of God. The plan was always that people would be against Christians, then Christians would save them. <laughs> this, it was a perfect balance. It was the right way to go. It was the perfect... You see, we don't always see God's master plan. Okay? We go to Peter here. Now, Peter at this point has completely changed his personality, his life, fruit, pure fruit. Whatever it was Jesus saw in Peter has come right now. He was a very difficult apostle, the most one to be tested, the most angry, the most violent. And you see the fruit of his change in him. The second, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you. In both, which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. You see, there's a last trick that once you're a Christian, Satan will try and use on you. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of thus the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Okay? I want you to remember the actual words. Now, the only way to do that is to read and study the Bible. Okay, there isn't uh, another way. But I want you to remember this, he's saying. An account that the long-suffering of our, our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. Peter mentions Paul. Because some people are saying, Paul was just made up. He didn't know if Peter's writing about him. He's there. And if he's saying the wisdom given unto him, he's complimenting it. Don't forget, Paul and Peter have fallen. <laughs> he says, I withstood him to, be, to the face because he was to be blamed. Peter and Paul argued. They did not get on. And it was Peter's fault and he admitted it. Okay? Also in all his epistles, speaking of them these things, in which are some things 
hard to be understood. Sometimes people find it's not, don't be embarrassed about it. There might be something difficult to understand in the Bible. Okay? They that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Brother, is that my brother from England? How are you? Hi, sister. It's good to see you. Let's get these guys some chairs. My brother is from Spurgeon's Church. Am I right? In the UK. The actual one that Spurgeon. Okay. So what do we do? We account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Is anything else salvation? No. I'm going to save you a lot of reading and time. There is no other way to be saved. Now, people are going to convince you that works will save you. The things you do will save you. It's not true. Attending church will save you. No. Being baptized will save you. No. Jesus, that was it. Okay. He long suffered, and that's our salvation. He took the blame. He did everything. Now, it's also telling you a future prediction. Now, a third of the Bible is warning and prophecy. That's, that's how important it is. Okay, warning, 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 all the time in the Bible. It's like when, when you're driving, you've got to learn the road signs. You know, this is a warning for this, warning. You know? Here's one of the warnings. Some people find things hard to understand. Who are they? They're people without the Holy Spirit. They simply don't understand the Bible. And there's a lot of them out there. And, and horribly, a lot of them become pastors. You know, self-declared pastors, you know. It's a terrible thing because they don't understand the Bible. I've met loads of them. I was in a room with, I think, uh, eight of us. There was eight of us. They called me to this meeting. And I'm sitting there looking around at these people. I thought, none of you understand that verse, do you? And you're church leaders. <laughs> and I'm a nobody, you know, and, and I get it. I wasn't a pastor at the time, but I'm still nobody if you, if you think about it, okay? They are unlearned and unstable rest. Rest means to twist. People twist parts of the Bible. Okay? When um, it says God sent his angel. They say, see, God is an angel. No, that's not what it says. If God sent his angel, it means exactly what it said. Okay? If it says Jesus is the morning star and some fake new Bible calls Satan the morning star, don't read that Bible anymore. Okay? Don't let people twist things. Now, the last warning, unto their own destruction. What does that mean? That means these people might have a Bible. They might have been baptized. But because they twisted scripture, it's to their own destruction. A horrible thing, but a real thing. Something worth noting about. Okay? Okay. Yet therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Okay? But grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, can you be led away with the error of the wicked? If it's saying, be careful in case it happens, it means it can happen. You could have a real Christian person that ends up going to a strange place. <laughs> He's very strange. Remember the coffee and tea people? Who was I telling you about? Seventh-day Adventists. Coffee and tea is a sin. And tomatoes and eggs, I think, are a sin as well, or something like that. I'm thinking, where's, where's the scripture for these things that you're saying? You know, and coffee's wrong as well. In that I think the Mormons can't have coffee. I'm sitting there thinking to myself, don't fall from your own steadfastness. You have a grounding, a strong root. You know the Bible. Don't let anyone derail you because they say they're important and they've you know, been doing this 50 years. It doesn't matter. I debated a guy. He was one of these JWs. And he was 65 years old. And... <laughs> 
I'll tell you what happened. I debated a JW in the street. I still do it when I find them. And he couldn't, he couldn't make, he couldn't understand how I was beating him in everything. So he took me to his elder. He calls. If, if you try and beat them, they call their elders. They drive down. I'm the elder, you know. This is what they do, okay. The elder couldn't answer my questions either. He took me to the top, top JW boy in Cyprus. And he, he says to me, the JW boy, the top guy, says, you really know the scriptures. I thought, if me <laughs> know the scriptures against you who've been doing it 65 years, what does that mean? That means there's a Holy Spirit, and he can teach someone who just picked up the Bible more than someone who believes they know it, okay? He was led away with an error of wickedness. Now, why am I showing you this map? We don't know the reason God picks certain things or certain people to do certain jobs. I have to show you where Sicily is. Okay, it's not Sicily, which is, you know. Okay, so this is where Paul's from. Paul of Tarsus in Sicily. Why am I showing you this? Well, it's for this reason. Okay. Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. A city in Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak to these people. Now, what's going on? Well, because of certain circumstances of Paul, Paul was perfect for a certain job, the same way you are. Mario can't reach someone that you can. Mario, what are you talking about? You know, you're... You know, you've got a Bible in your hand. God picks people that we don't understand, and they don't even understand the reason they've been chosen. There's a reason for it, okay? So we're going to the next part here. Ah, the reason I'm showing you this, let me go back. Let me go back. Um, yes, Okay, so Rome decided that this was now part of Rome. How did Paul become a Roman citizen? That's how. Okay? You can understand why in a minute when I explain this to you, but I just had to explain. So it's north of where we are now. For those watching, that's Cyprus. Okay? Ananias, <laughs> he's asking God, are you sure? about this guy, because we're not sure, God, just in case you don't know, okay, let me explain to you, God, about this guy, Saul, who then becomes Paul, and a nice answer, Lord, I've heard uh, by many of this man, how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem, but the Lord said to him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, he's saying what's about to happen, and the children of Israel. Okay? Are you sure, God? Because he's been killing us. <laughs> he's been doing these things. Go thy way. You've got a job to do for God. Go thy way and do it. There's plenty to do. Okay? So, Ananias is a bit, but Jesus has put him straight. Okay? Now, so that's the person who's doubting. Now Saul himself is doubting while he's been chosen. Okay? So other people are doubting why that guy's been chosen. Now Saul's doubting it. Okay? He said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every single them that believed on me. In case you don't know what I've done, God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to refresh your memory a little bit, are you sure you want me for this job? And when the blood of thy martyr, Stephen, was shed, I also was standing by and consenting to his death. And I kept the raiment of them that slew him. What does that mean? If you're going to throw stones at someone, it's a hot, sweaty job. They gave Paul the task of looking after the cloaks. Paul, look after our cloaks, Saul at the time. Saul, look after our cloaks while we stone this guy. And he's saying, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. And he's looking after the cloaks. But that's weighing heavy on Paul now. That's hurting Paul. 
I watched this documentary where there was these horrible Nazis and they were told to do these horrific things to people and it was bothering them. They couldn't take it anymore and they were so demoralized they couldn't do it anymore. Not all of them were evil. Some of them were just misled. But it does the same thing. It bothers you. The evil you have done in your life bothers you. Okay? And he said, depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Does Jesus care what this guy's done? Everything you've done up to this point is washed away, finished over. I, I understand how some of you feel bad. And sometimes you'll wake, wake up at night. How could I have done that to that person? To those watching, has it happened to you as well? Do you feel guilty and guilty about the things you've done? It's okay to feel guilty, but it's washed. It's done. That's just as important. Get rid of it. Don't let the guilt overtake you. That's one of Satan's tricks. Okay? Now, if Paul hadn't been born in that place and wasn't a Jew and a Roman, then this couldn't have happened. Then Festus, we had conferred with the council, answered, Has thou appealed to Caesar? Unto Caesar thou shalt go. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There's a certain man left in bonds by Felix. Now, what did Jesus say? Okay. He will bear my name to kings. Remember that. And what has he done? He's gone to Caesar and the king Agrippa at the time. I couldn't put it all in, but that's what he's done. So Jesus' prediction was exactly right. I chose Paul for a specific reason, because he's the best at that job. Okay. Now, I don't know the exact circumstances of all your lives. I don't. Okay. But what I know is there are certain people that God's going to send into your life because only you could have saved them. And you have to plant that seed. God will water it, but you have to plant that seed. Yeah. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, arise, have a fight, get up, do something. And the Lord said to me, arise, go into Damascus. There it shall be told of thee the things which are appointed for thee to do. Does God tell you the reason straight away? No. God doesn't. God doesn't say, I picked you for a certain job straight away. It will become obvious to you when you get there. Now. Okay. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men. Of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? What are you waiting for? People, what are we waiting for? Arise, be baptized, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. This is what people need to do. Some people are on the floor, I know this has happened to you, it must have happened many times. They come up to you and they go, you know, I've done all these things. Like, Arise, get up. <laughs> Your sins are washed away. It's a new day. Don't dwell on the past. It's not so much with you. You worked with kids, didn't you, Adrian? You worked with kids. Not so much sin there, I suppose. <laughs> but you see that there. Okay? Now, I prayed because we've, got, we've had a lot of Russian people come here and ask me, please, we need a Russian Baptist church. We want a Russian Baptist church. So I'm praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Please, God, there's got to be one. And he's here at the back. Hello, brother. <laughs> so God answers his prayers when he wants, not when you want, firstly. And secondly, he answers them. Now, what will happen? We're going to set a day here where they're going to have a, a Russian Bible study. Fantastic. You yeah, see how happy everyone is. <laughs> so we've got that, an answered prayer. Uh, and I think 
What's the next stage? We've done the tracks as well, Maria. We all did the tracks as well. So we're, we're making a, a thing. You've probably brought me some more leaflets, right, from your church, the man. Okay, because people have been taking them. <laughs> so you see here what's happening. Okay, we're risen and fighting. And when you see someone completely destroyed, pick them up. The way Jesus picks people up, okay, get them back on their feet and get out there. What will happen is this. There's a, there's a, there's a thing in a church, and they think of you as a crutch to keep them up. But they get used to having that crutch, okay? Please, brother, can you pray for me? I've got no problem with that. People uh, call me all the time. Please, brother, let's pray over the phone right now. Okay, fantastic. Let's do that. But make sure that you strengthen them so they can stand on their own. Then your time can be given to other people that need to stand. It can happen. And you can use your media, your Facebooks, your whatever it is you do, okay, to, to, to reach out to those people. You speak Russian? Fantastic. Use that. It's a gift that I don't have, brother. You know, uh, I know a few words. You know, what would you like to drink? What would you like to eat? But that's it. Okay? I'm going to end it there, and we're going to pray. But we're going to pray for a certain thing that's in my heart. I want you to also pray for what's in your heart. Okay, because you can hear me pray. That doesn't mean that after I finish praying, you can't sit there, bow your head, and pray for what you want. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's pray. My God in heaven, I pray that people wash away their sins, realize they're washed away, and get up and fight for you. I pray that people see through before they're broken off, their branches are broken off. I pray that People change and offer you as an offering their sins. I will not do this anymore. Lord, I pray for strength for the church around the world. I pray for the real missionaries that do your work. I pray for the churches to become one in doctrine and speaking. I pray that people no longer get to twist your words. And the beauty and the love and the holiness of the Bible go out into the world. May all glory be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming into the world. Amen. Now, for those uh, watching on, online, I have to cut the video now because they will try and copyright the songs that we sing and stuff like this. So please don't be offended. God bless you and thank you for joining us. And Please contact us if you have any questions.